Smallpox most likely emerged thousands of years ago. However, we do not have concrete evidence to pinpoint its exact date. Yet, we do have Egyptian mummies from the New Kingdom, which lasted from 1750 to 1085, that have skin lesions that are akin to smallpox. Pharaohs like Ramses V have the trademark bumps all over their bodies, which is strong evidence to support that smallpox was impacting the ancient world. The earliest written account comes from China in around the 4th century CE. It was a written description of smallpox. India also has written accounts of the disease from the 7th century. And of course, there are accounts that have been written from the Middle East and Europe. But what exactly is smallpox? What were the symptoms and how was it spread? Also, how is it related to the more modern illness monkeypox? We will cover this here at Learning the Social Sciences. Smallpox was a feared illness due to its high mortality rate. Three out of 10 people died, while the majority of others had scars all over their body. The disease spread through the air as droplets. However, one could also get it through clothing, bedding, or other cloths that an infected person used. Typically, symptoms did not develop until 10 to 14 days after a person became infected, which means they may not know where exactly they caught the disease. Once one would become symptomatic, they would feel a whole body discomfort. Fatigue would set in and then a fever. One would also experience a headache, severe back pain, and possibly nausea and vomiting. Then a few days after that, red spots would appear on one's face, hands, and arms. Then the flat spots would move to one's trunk. Many spots would turn into small blisters that contained clear fluid that would eventually change into pus. After eight days or so, scabs would form over the spots, which would eventually come off, but leave deep scars on the skin. Some people who were infected and survived experienced blindness. Smallpox primarily spread through the trade routes. The disease reached Japan in 735 via Korea and devastated the country as one third of the population died. With such a large percentage of death, the economy and society as a whole was greatly impacted. Japan's nobles offered private land to anyone who would become farmers to rebuild the country's agricultural sector. When Europeans came to the Americas, they brought influenza, smallpox, and measles with them. The entire population of North and South America had no immunity to these diseases. And out of all of them, smallpox was feared the most, as it killed between 20 and 50% of the population of the Americas. Then if we combine all of the diseases that the Europeans brought, 90% of the native population of the Americas died. People tried all they could to prevent themselves from getting smallpox or to heal themselves once inflicted. When Queen Elizabeth I contracted smallpox, some during her time blamed it on the fact that she took a bath the night before she became symptomatic, stating that baths were bad. This just confirmed that European bias against bathing, as they thought that it widened one's pores, which allowed diseases to enter the body. China started a method known as variolation to try to reduce the percentage of people who died from the disease. It was noted that no one caught smallpox twice, and usually people who had survived treated those who had fallen ill. So they figured if someone could get a less potent version of the disease, then their likelihood of surviving would go up and they wouldn't have to worry about coming down with the illness again. Variolation involved taking the scabs from someone who was ill and then rubbing it on the wounds of someone who never had the disease. It was noted that if someone contracted smallpox through their skin, 
then they would have a better chance of surviving compared to somebody who contracted it through the air. This practice spread throughout Asia, Europe, and parts of Africa. Yet even though one contracted a less potent form of smallpox, the chance of dying was still there. That unfortunately happened to King George III's son, Prince Octavius, who died at the age of four after variolation. In 1796, English doctor Edward Jenner noticed that milkmaids who contracted cowpox never contracted smallpox. He theorized that one could then use cowpox as part of the variolation process instead of smallpox and still get the anticipated result, immunity to smallpox. Cowpox is a cousin to smallpox, belonging to the orthopox virus genus, which also contains the variola virus, otherwise known as smallpox. Cowpox is far more mild and today is extremely rare, mainly infecting rodents and cats who catch them and thus become infected. Usually cowpox causes one or a small number of lesions to form on one's hands or face. The lesions will also fill with pus and form a black scab and then heal, thus leaving a scar. Yet one's immune system is able to control the virus and it rarely causes one to die. Dr. Jenner used cowpox to variolate the nine-year-old son of his gardener. Months later, he exposed the child to smallpox and he never contracted the disease. He then published his results in On the Origin of the Vaccine Inoculation. In 1959, the World Health Organization sought to eradicate smallpox for good and started an eradication campaign. In 1967, the effort was increased to ensure that the entire world would get the vaccine. Eventually, smallpox was eradicated in 1977. However, the last death occurred in 1978 when medical photographer Janet Parker contracted the illness when she worked in the medical microbiology department where they were conducting smallpox research at England's Birmingham University. Today, only two laboratories in the world have variola virus, one in the United States and the other in Russia. Yet nations around the world have stockpiled vaccines in the rare case that an outbreak would ever occur again. In 2022, monkeypox, which is traditionally only found in Central and Western Africa, has been found in numerous European countries, Canada, and the United States. The disease was detected in 1958 in monkeys, with the first human case occurring in 1970. This disease belongs to the orthopox virus genus, like smallpox and cowpox. Monkeypox has impacted the United States before, including an outbreak in 2003 linked to prairie dogs that were sold as pets. Monkeypox has milder symptoms compared to smallpox. One would have a fever, muscle aches, fatigue, and swollen lymph nodes. The lymph node swelling is a major difference between smallpox and monkeypox. However, both have that extended incubation period that can last up to 14 days before becoming symptomatic. However, once ill, a person usually needs two to four weeks to get over the illness. Unfortunately, in Africa, one in 10 people have died from monkeypox who have contracted it. The United States does have the smallpox vaccine, which is effective against monkeypox as well. And if a large outbreak would ever occur, they have enough on hand to inoculate the entire country. There are also antivirals and VIG treatments that can help, but there is no proven treatment for the virus when one is infected. The CDC, who and other organizations around the world are monitoring the spread of monkeypox and doing all they can to prevent a continued increase in the amount of cases. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And always remember to hit that like and subscribe button so you know when we post more content here at Learning the Social Sciences. Once again, thank you and bye-bye.